They break, they steal, no one here is free. Here they come, they come for thee. Unless you listen to David Stacy. Welcome back, everyone. This is Dave from Corn Productions with my co-host Stacey here to talk about from Season 3, Episode 4, titled There and Back Again, which sounds like a Hobbit story. That's I think that's the, literally the, the uh, title of Bilbo's book uh, in that series, which I don't even think you don't know anything I about that. I don't know because, what you're talking about. Because you're not a Hobbit. You're not a I'm Lord not of the Rings a, fan. I might be a Hobbit. You're, you're not a Lord <laughs> of the Rings fan. All right, so the episode's description reads as follows. Uh, Boyd is forced to make a tough decision when newcomers arrive in town at nightfall. Victor unearths memories from his past in hopes of finding answers. The episode was written by Kristen Layden and directed by Jack Bender. Before any further, I'll tell you a couple things. One, this is Ask for Free Podcast, so if you haven't watched the episode, I highly recommend you go and check it out and then come back and give us a listen. Secondly, if you're listening to one of the platforms of this podcast, now available one, please follow. And feel free to check out my YouTube channel, Corn Productions, where additional content can be discovered. If you're already on my YouTube channel, please like, share, and comment, and subscribe to our channel. Shoutouts this week. Okay. Uh, Master Army. And these are in response to our 302 episode. As well as the Mrs. Wu interview. Oh, yes. Uh, Elizabeth Moy. And thank yes. you again, Elizabeth, mm-hmm. for interviewing with us. That was amazing. Yep. And if you haven't seen that, go back and watch it. We talked everything episodes 301 and 302, as well as some more general stuff about her character and her time on From. Yep. And uh, by the way, did you see that picture with uh, Mrs. Wu and the monsters all drinking from cups? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Somebody <laughs> made like a, a meme about it. Yep. Okay. So uh, Master Army says it would be amazing to have origin stories, uh, uh, an origin story series in one episode for uh, one episode for each of the main characters. Yeah, like an anthology series. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's something I had uh, tweeted about. Actually, yeah. I don't remember if it was this week or the week before, but I was like, actually, no, it was for this week because um, it was in response to the the story about the pool. Okay. And how we had a new. You know, characters we don't know, and they're like, right. "Oh yeah, that's whose cars in the pool." Right. And it was just like, wouldn't it be great if we could have an anthology series and like just see different characters? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, origin stories of some of our main characters would be great, and some of the little characters too. Right. You know, like like how about a Clara episode and what the yeah. heck's her life happening before she gets to Fromville? Absolutely. Or, or Dale, I'd love to know Dale's story. <laughs> right. Was he always a butthole? You know, these or... these things that we're not going to get to in our story, but it would be mm. great to know. Or even like a web series or something. Right. It'd be it'd be great to have that type of content. He he finishes with the he would love to see Tian Chen's or origin story episode as well. Uh, Latrice, uh, she said that us comparing from to Under the Dome makes me more interested in that show. I'm not sure why I never checked it out. All right, so I can't necessarily recommend uh, that show. I do. Uh, I mean, okay, it's really good for a season. Yeah. After that. Nah. I, so I still think it's watchable. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't go great places. Right. It it goes pretty bad. Mm. But I still think it's watchable. Okay. Um, if you're looking for something to watch, you know, mm. in that vein of people trapped somewhere. Yeah. You know, it's based on Stephen King. The book's great. I highly recommend the book. Yes. If anybody wants to invest 1,100 pages of reading. Yep. I highly recommend the book Under the Dome. Yeah. Check that one out. Okay. Um, but if you don't want an 1,100 page book, um, the show is watchable Mm -hmm. it starts off pretty good it gets pretty terrible but if you know (laughs) that going in i mean it's it's still like it's still an okay watch i mean there's actors in the show uh that you know it's they're fun to watch yeah Uh, so it's not like completely not it's not completely terrible to watch uh especially if you know it's gonna go off the rails right uh but yeah she also liked my theory about of the rotten food being specifically to feed batama's baby uh, and that's pretty much all I have for shout outs for this week. Uh, episode two has aired at this point. Yeah. So we have the reception. We know how people reacted to that episode. Generally, it seemed pretty positive. Uh, I saw a few people complaining that yes. it was boring. And and those t- those people are not watching for the same yeah, thing. You know that what? I'm Every for. episode isn't going to be what mm. this episode is. They're going to like this episode. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but every episode can't be this high paced action episode. Well,. I'm not just here for the high pace. Exactly. Action. I'm also not just here to figure out what's going on in this town. I would like to know those questions, the answers to those those questions for sure. 
but I'm here for the drama of the story. Here for the story. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm here to, I'm fully willing to give these creators the benefit of the doubt. We get more answers than they have gotten credit for. Uh, at this point, they're saying we've gotten zero answers. That's not accurate at all. It's not accurate. Not, uh, not in the slightest. The, right. It is, what questions are you asking? Because mm. we've gotten lots of answers. Yeah. Like we just said, we got an answer to how the car ended up in the pool. We did, we did. I Early mean, they're giving us some very direct answers to some questions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're not giving us the big answers because that ends the show. Right. <laughs> we're not ready to end the show. No. no like we, we can't wrap it all up. Right. Because then it's over. Yes, and I don't want it to be over. Right, exactly. So, uh, any comments about 302? Um, so, the biggest thing I've seen people talking about is right before Fatima ate the vegetables. I've seen this conversation. Um, a lot of people, like yeah. lots and lots of people are saying she w couldn't open the door to Colony House. The door was locked for her. She couldn't get in. And that's some proof that she is carrying or turning into or both a creature. Right. Um, now, I don't necessarily disagree with what's happening to her. No. But I am not under the impression that she could not get in the house. So uh, my question is, would the, would the talisman even be protecting any of them now? They, they, I don't think they've activated it. Then well, we have to like do some like... I mean, that's another thing, too, is we don't right. know for sure right. exactly how that works. We've right. seen them touching it. But they've never said, like, you have to touch it. Right. Like, just that it's hanging... Because um, they don't touch it during the day because it's daytime. The creatures right. aren't out. Right. Um, I do feel like after seeing this debate that it was potentially edited in a way that you could question what's happening with the door. Mm -hmm. I've watched this scene like a dozen times trying to see what people are seeing. And I see what they're seeing. But I also don't see her trying to open the door and then not. Right. The camera's not on her hands while this is happening. The camera's on her face. Right. What I see is her nose going up because she sniffs the food and turns around to look. Right. She's distracted. She's about to enter and then she doesn't. Mm -hmm. And um, some people are like, no, absolutely, 100%. She turned the knob and it wouldn't open. You can't say that because the camera's not even on the doorknob. Right. They're, they're saying they hear the sound of her trying to get in and then... Just because she touched to... the door doesn't mean she couldn't open the door. Right. Um, but I do see what people are seeing. I just don't see it as proof that she can't get in. I see it more as a, well, we don't know if she could get in because we didn't watch her get in. Right. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe that's intentional. Maybe she can't get in. Right. But I don't feel like this is telling us for certain that's the case. I don't feel like that's it at all. There's, there's, it would have been more obvious if they're trying to tell us for certain she can't get in. Uh, the one thing I can tell you for sure is that her eating rotten vegetables is a bad sign. It's a bad sign. And after this episode, I'm even more concerned about her. I think we can pretty confidently say something not great's happening. Yeah. Something yeah. very not great. Yeah. Um, I have a literal note that says, WTF? Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't even want to talk about that part of the episode, but we will when we get there. Right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, people, it seemed to be one of those things that, that people were pretty uh, vastly different on their opinion mm. on what's happening. And people seem pretty confident one way or the other. And I, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. Right. I don't think this is proof, but maybe, maybe she can't get in. But I don't think we've had another situation where she's tried to go in a dorm <laughs> since then. Right. So... I guess we'll find out what's happening with that yeah. as we go. Um, here's the other thing that came out of 302 airing is uh, the news article that Tabitha shows Henry. Yes. About the missing Matthews family. Uh, apparently that goes to a real website, not something I had looked into before. Oh, okay. Uh, you can go to, I, f I didn't write down what it was, but like the name of the newspaper, you go to that.com and it pulls up a front page of the newspaper and there is the story. There's the Matthews family. Oh. You can read it. Okay, so this is a true story, in other words. Well, it's it's on the internet. It must be true, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then there's the uh, the uh, the Rende Move Rende Move advertisement, which people were commenting on on the episode. But once you go to this website, you can actually see it up close and clear. And I do have a copy of that. I'll give you to put in our images for this episode. Um, in this episode, because this is you know when we're talking about it, even though it didn't happen in this episode. If you right. follow me? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Um. A lot of people are saying that that ad is Boyd, Abby, and Ellis. Okay. It is definitely not. 
I haven't if, looked into if it. If you go but. to the website, you can see it nice and clear. Yeah. It's definitely not them. It's definitely not supposed to represent them when they're younger. Like, it's a young boy, and they're saying, oh, that's Ellis when he was a kid, and the family was uh, modeling for Rendezvous. No. Because that's very not supposed to be Abby. It's definitely not a blonde woman. Right. Um, no. Right. It's not supposed to be them. Okay. But something that is interesting is there's a little sailboat in the ad hmm. sitting on the box. So there's Ooh. a boat. Okay. I mean, so maybe it's not unintentional that it's a mixed race family. Right. But it's definitely not supposed to be them specifically. Gotcha. No, it's definitely not. Okay. Um, And the other thing about this article is, as far as I'm concerned, it clearly debunks the idea that Tabitha is Eloise. Because the article gives us a canon in the show now. I've idea. seen a lot of theories about that coming yeah, up again. Yeah, it's been coming up again. And it's weird that it's coming up now because I feel like now is the time that we can squash it. Because the article very specifically says Tabitha's in her mid-30s. Right. And in the same episode, we were told specifically that Victor's been missing for 40 years. Except if we're going to introduce the time travel element. Yeah, but... See, that's another thing. People are talking about like, oh, the time runs differently. We don't know that. Some people are, like, saying that's a fact, that time runs differently. If anything, I think we've been told time runs the same. Like, yes, there could be a time travel element. Right. And Eloise could have traveled to a different time. Mm. But the idea that time isn't running parallel has been squashed. Well, how could she be Eli uh, Eloise? Eloise. They're two different races. like Right. Isn't like Tabitha... I mean, it was on my list of possibilities yeah, when we I first mean, met Eloise. She was one yeah. of my options. My other one, the one I really liked was that Eloise is Abby. Right. I really liked that theory I had. Um, but... I mean, no. Have we seen Miranda? Do we know which... What... What are races? Like I mean, maybe? yeah, we've seen Miranda. We have. As well, much as we've yeah, seen yeah, Eloise. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> what am I talking about? So yeah, there's no, uh, there's no, um, there's no way. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, there's no way that she could be like uh, Tabitha. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, the fact that Tabitha is in her mid thirties, I mean, that was a question mark, right? Is yeah. how old is Tabitha supposed to be? They're mm -hmm. point blank told us in black and white she's in her mid thirties. Yeah. So that's where we're at with her. Okay. She's not fifty years old. Right. By any stretch of the imagination. She doesn't look fifty years old. I mean, she could have been a little older. Right. There was some wiggle room there. Mm -hmm. You know, her, she did have a baby recently, so she couldn't have been too old. Right. But her oldest daughter is 17, so, I mean, there's some wiggle room. Okay. But we're being told specifically she is in her mid-30s. That's the character. And as far as I'm concerned, we can close the book on Tabitha being Eloise. But some people are also at the same time saying, we have proof that it's her. What proof? No, you don't. <laughs> you don't got no proof. Right. Nothing even a little bit. Okay. Um, and the one other thing about this website, the uh, the Ronde Move website. So there's a newspaper website that you can click on the ad to go to the Ronde Move website, and it just says like, "Oh, you found a uh, uh, this page is broken or something." But it's it's not like a real broken page. It's that's what the page is. Okay. It's got like, the Ronde Move logo on it, and apparently somewhere in that, hidden in the code, and I'm not smart enough to know how to do that, but people have said they found this in there. There's a, <clears throat> a picture. Like a Victor or an Eloise drawing. Okay. Of their house, the childhood house with the number 1597 written on it. And there's these two like demon creatures standing <laughs> outside of the house. Oh. And this picture is embedded in the Ronde Move website. Does, did anybody produce that or are they just saying that? Um, I've seen multiple people talking about it and posting it. So. Gotcha. But they have, have they posted the picture themselves? Yes, yes. I have okay. the picture. Okay, I'll okay. give you that picture too. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I can't confirm that 100% that picture came from this website. And but it, multiple people have said that, so I'm I'm going with the fact that it did come from that website. Gotcha. And not that somebody made it up. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. Yeah, it's it is something. interesting. And it's very similar, you know, the things they did with Lost. When, like, right. I, mean, I know you didn't watch Lost when it was airing, but while Lost was airing, we had, we had actual, like, TV commercials, real-life mm -hmm. TV commercials for the fictional brands in Lost. Okay. Like Oceanic Airlines had a TV commercial. Gotcha. And there were websites and there were like really cryptic clues happening outside of the show. Okay. Based on different things in the show. So that's, that's pretty cool. It's similar to that where like there's interactive stuff, mm. you know. I mean, similar to like the missing posters 
Um, Donna's poster has a phone number on it. I called that phone number when those came out. <laughs> Did it work? It it went to like a um, like a bill collection agency. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I hung up. It wasn't like a fake number. Gotcha. Like I was expecting it to be a recording about from you know somebody looking to you know get money from you. What? Somebody is looking to get money from you. The bill collection agency. So the point is, it wasn't a plant. It was just a number. Oh. So, are you allowed to do that? Like a, a functional number? I mean, it, it, they did it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess so. All right. <laughs> I mean, maybe it wasn't a functioning number when they produced it, but right I don't now know. it is. I don't know. Um, but those are like the little types of things you got to look at, you know. And 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 this audience is going to find all of those things. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to necessarily find them ourselves because somebody will. Gotcha. All right, anything to say about uh, anything more about Real We had another successful live tweet session. We did. Well, I was sleeping for it this well, time. Well, I, I, I live tweeted, and there had a lot of interaction. It was um, mm-hmm. another really great time. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to do that every week. I definitely won't be able to do it for this episode, 304, right. when it airs. Because um, we're going to be on our trip that weekend. Yeah, the funny thing is I intended to uh, be part of that. I, I decided to take a nap. Uh, and then wake up <laughs> and then you didn't uh, yeah i didn't i didn't do the waking up part of that uh so my most popular tweet for 302 was uh about how uh jade stayed by mrs lou's side oh. with, through her body throughout the whole day and the mm. funeral and that got lots and lots and lots of likes lots and lots tweet. and lots yeah sweet yeah all right so stacy your thoughts <gasps> on this week's 304. episode so it's an action-packed episode yeah, I thought this was a fantastic episode. Um, it, you know, they've all been great this season so far. We had but... another death. Yes, yes. We have another, well, not a death yet, but a really bad situation. Something that's not great. Um, I think in that specific case, I'm not convinced they're going to kill him. I don't think they're going to. No, but he, he well, we'll get there. He's, but... he's in bad shape, though. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's not good. He's not in good shape. Um, We have... Uh... I mean, we have people arriving at night. This whole episode is taking place at night. Mm. I think over a very short amount of time. Yep. Um, we get that scene that I was waiting for last week between uh, Sarah and uh, and um, Victor. Was it everything you hoped for? No, I was a little disappointed with it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm. But it seems like that's going in maybe weird places. Right. Yes. <laughs> um. We've got our, our, our food hunting crew still hanging out in the cabin. Not a whole lot happened with them. They talked. Yeah. Which is something the audience wants to happen. Yeah. Um, Jade's finally opening up to people. That's great. And yes. telling his story. Yep. Um, but not a whole lot of advancement with them. Right. But mostly we're dealing with, like, this ambulance. And Tabitha's back. She's back. She's back. And, and she, back again. she brought friends and enemies. Right. <laughs> um, and we have a whole new dynamic now. Yeah. New characters, everybody's here now. Our, you know, our new cast members are are in it. Yeah, everybody's in from. I think we're done with the real world, which is kind of a shame. It is. I, or, I, don't, know, or, I don't know. I don't even know if it was the real world. Right. But we're done with that. Right. For now, at least. Yeah. I mean, we knew we weren't going to spend the entire season there for sure. I, I was. I thought we might get a little bit longer, and I'm not totally sure what we got out of our venture to the real world, other than things we already knew. The mm-hmm. Miranda stuff, we kind of we already knew that this whole thing was about the Angui children, right? But we we learned, uh, although it's things we could have learned from Henry, but we yeah. got to see the paintings. I yeah. think that's a big deal. Is we got mm. to look at those paintings. I think there's tons and tons and tons of clues in them. See, I, there's one other aspect of that that I think is actually an asset to the series in the fact that uh, Henry is arriving with knowledge of this place. Right. And I think he actually, I said this last week, I think he actually wants to be there. I think this is the first person to show up in the front bill who actually is good with showing up here and act- actively wants to be here. And I, I don't think he really cares about escaping. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm thinking that's a positive aspect. Hmm. We're going to get like a, a different, a different person's perspective on the place coming from a different place. Like, you know, everyone that gets here wants to escape. Right. Whereas Henry wants to be here. So that, that should be Well, Victor wants to be here, too. So they can live happily ever after yeah. and send everybody else home. Yeah, maybe. How about that? <laughs> sure, sounds good. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, I thought this was a really great episode. Um, every episode this season so far has been great. Yeah, it's been an amazing 
yeah. season so right. far. Absolutely. Um, I don't feel like any of these four episodes were filler even, at all. Even though, like... Like, there's some slower moments. Yeah. But they're all, like, great stuff happening mm -hmm. in, in all of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything else to say before diving in? Uh, let's let's go for it. All right. So the episode begins with the ambulance at the tree. The EMTs are trying to get hold of someone to no avail. Yeah, they, they both are... get out and they like are looking at the now. He... Yeah, this doesn't feel very realistic to me. No, you're an ambulance driver. You have patients in the ambulance. Mm -hmm. You come across a tree block, clearly blocking the road. You're not moving the tree. Right. What do you do? You turn around. You turn around. You don't get out and like start walking around and looking at the tree for 10 minutes. Right. You would turn around as quick as you saw it and keep going. Yes. Because you're on a time crunch. Right. You're trying to get to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, you'd be calling and trying to get a hold of people while you're driving. Right. Not like standing outside looking at a tree. <laughs> so meanwhile, Tabitha gets out of the ambulance and ignores Caleb. Uh, this is Calum McDonald, the EMT. Uh, EMT number two is, is who he so is. So I'm just going to call him Calum <laughs> since I'm not going to call him EMT number two while he's here in the show anyway, which will not be for much longer. Uh, yeah, she tells her to get in back inside. We see the crows. Acosta suggests taking a detour, but Tabitha tries to tell her it's not going to work. Acosta is ignoring her and ushering her back into the ambulance. And yeah, th this, these scenes are going to be extremely frustrating to watch. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, Ethan is looking at the drawings uh, at the his table with uh, when the phone rings. Yeah, the phone rings again. Yep. And we answered the question I had last week of can only Jim hear the phone ringing? Right. Not so much. Not so much because Ethan answers the phone. Right. And it's Tom, the Thomas voice telling him about his mom being in the ambulance. And I found that very interesting. Yes. Because this voice, even though it's pretending to be Thomas and taunting Jim, is giving Ethan helpful information. Yes. Uh, your mom's in an ambulance and needs help. Right. So I'm not really sure what the voice's deal is. <laughs> but it... We're never sure what any uh, force's deal right. is in this show. <laughs> so... He also isn't buying that it's Thomas. He right. Asks, he, it doesn't trick right. him at all. He's like, who's this really? Like, right. you're obviously not my baby brother. <laughs> so Jim enters the kitchen, threatens the voice, and then hangs up and takes the phone off the wall when it starts ringing again. And wouldn't you know it? Right. No wires. Right. If you couldn't have guessed. Right. Like, it's just sitting. It's just a piece of plastic hanging on the wall. So I'm curious, why couldn't that phone ring again? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that I mean, there it, was a reason. I mean, it could. Yeah. It could, because it's not hooked to anything. Julie enters and wonders what's going on. Jim asks uh, Ethan what the voice said, and Ethan tells him that the voice said that his mom is coming in the ambulance and not to be afraid and all that. And then credits, K sera, sera. Uh The episode begins... Oh, so when we come back, we're at Colony House with Bakta, Nikki, Elgin, and Tilly arguing over the dead bird. Uh, Donna ends up interrupting the argument. Elgin claims to be fine. Yeah, just go back to sleep, Elgin. You don't yeah, you're um, not need to hear. Poor Elgin. Like, what's he doing? Right. Uh, um, so far, all he's Ni done so far is sleep. So Nikki's cleaning the blood off the wall. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to get Bakta to pick up the dead bird. And Bakta's like, uh, no. Not in my job description. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's similar to uh, your husband messaging me to ask me to deal with your dead squirrel. He did do that. Yes. Yes. And I, and I told him no. I was not doing that. But anyway. Um. <laughs> but she she doesn't want any part of the birds. Bad juju. And this right. is, she she chastised Tilly for for doing tarot in here. And I noted that they already boarded up the windows um, Good. before they're dealing with the cleaning, so they yeah, have their yeah. priorities straight. Mm -hmm. The house is losing natural light very quickly. There's not a lot of windows left that aren't boarded up at this point. <laughs> right. Is there a way to? Uh, how would you build glass windows? You wouldn't. No. I mean, not here. We were okay. You, you, you press sand with like millions of pounds of pressure. And that's. that's I, I don't know. That's all I got. Okay. Um. But interesting to note here to me, because I remember I told you last week, I know that a bird in the house is a superstition for death. Yes. Nikki's the one cleaning it up. Oh. And since Bokta refused to clean up the bird itself, I'm guessing Nikki did that too. Right. Is that the reason she's our person in trouble? Maybe. Because so, she touched it? Well, I if we, if we continue to go along with my whole theory about your scheduled to die thing, then Nikki was going to die regardless of who touched that bird. 
But or and, just and, it could have just been any unimportant person. Yeah. yeah. Somebody has to die. Mm -hmm. It's unimportant. Yeah, possibly. Um. So I, I looked into this again because that was something that came off the top of my head, right? That, yep. that the birds assign a death, and I remember where I first heard that. It was in a one of Lucille Ball's biographies. <laughs> okay. Because I'm a big Lucy fan. All right. Um, and it's something I read as a child. It was one of her biographies. I think her autobiography. Uh, where she told this story about how when she was a kid, very little, a bird got in the house and, and it was she was scared because it was a message that there's going to be death. And then her father died like the next day. Okay. Or something like that. Her dad died when she was, I want to say, like four years old or something. Do you think somebody else read that book from the, that uh, is involved with this series? Well, I'm, I'm telling you, like, it's, that's how I knew this is a thing. Right. Right? That this yeah. is a, a, a myth, not myth, a legend, a... Superstition. Yes. That's the word. Yes. Like that a, a, a bird in the de in the house means death. Okay. And um, so I looked into that a little more. I was like, is this a, is this really a thing? Like, I think it's a thing, and I know why I think it's a thing, but is it really a thing? Mm -hmm. So I looked into it a little more, and I did find several sources that said a bird in the house means death. A lot of them said that it only means death if the bird dies. Well, the bird definitely the died bird in definitely this case. definitely did die in this case, yes. I also saw references that a bird in the house is related to pregnancy. Interesting. Yeah. So it's also... Like it's a sign if somebody's pregnant or something, if a bird's in the house. Well, neither one of those situations are accidents. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they very much th thought of both those situations. Uh, so Marie is checking on Fatima. Marielle. Yeah, Marielle. Uh, I don't know why you don't know anybody's names, Dave. I, I guess uh, I'm just having... Even online, I see you always calling her Marie. Yeah? I don't know why. That's that's in my notes. I mean, for sure, it's Mary. Mary. But not Marie. Not Marie. Okay. But her name's Mariel. Okay. So it's taking her mind off Christy. Uh, Fatima is looking better. Fatima isn't telling her what she's eating to do that. Yeah, but she said she she finally found something she can keep down. Yep. Um, and so I put this together. So Mariel's spending the night here. And uh, the reason why, I presume, is because she must, uh, Christy must have taken the talisman from the clinic with her. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got two talismen with them where they're at. So I presume it must be the one from the clinic, which is why Mary can't sleep there tonight. Probably. And uh, I'm assuming the other one is uh, from the bar. Okay. Uh, so we got to Sarah and Victor. He's opening up about his time with his sister. So uh, I got the impression that that they actually lived in this specific house. Well, th he told us this story. Yeah. He says when he was a kid, they didn't sleep in the houses. Right, yeah, yeah. Because they had to hide at night. Mm -hmm. But he said during the daytime, him and his sister would play in the houses. Mm -hmm. And he said that this house in particular was uh, Eloise's favorite. Mm. This was her favorite house. Gotcha. And he never understood why. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that's important. It, if I there's mean... something specific in this house that's going to come up. Because um, it seemed like a weird thing to tell us that this was her favorite house. Right. Uh, Victor insists that they need to go to the the basement because that is where the scary stories take place. Uh, and Victor was so funny. He was like, uh, he's like, oh, oh and this is, seems important because he said, because Sarah doesn't know him. This is their first time like really talking. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. like, oh, <clears throat> so you came here with your sister? And he's like, my sister and my mom I came here with. But they died. Right. Uh. But I didn't... He, he said they died, just like Nathan. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I didn't murder them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. Oh, uh, that was funny. He's trying to be relatable to her, but he's like, mm. oh, but wait, I'm not a murderer like you are. Right. But it's interesting that he specifically said Eloise died. Because mm. there's still that question out there, what happened to Eloise? Yeah, we... People are still wondering, did Eloise get out? Right. I, I... Now, I still don't think this is proof that he found her body. This he is didn't what... specifically say, I buried her. This is what he assumes. He says but. they died. Now, we know for a fact he said he found Miranda's body. Mm. He's never confirmed anything about uh, Eloise. Right. This is him saying they both died. So we think that... We know now that he at least thinks she's dead. Right. But he also, at the same time, didn't specifically say, oh, I found her body, I buried her, anything like that. Right. So it could be that he assumes she's dead just because he never saw her again. We we essentially have a confirmed death for Miranda, but we don't know anything about what actually happened to El, uh, Eloise. Eloise. Yeah. But we can confirm that he doesn't know about it if right. she's alive because he thinks she's dead. Right. Uh, so the ambulance drives. It's night. Everyone is confused except Tabitha. The driver wants to turn around. Tabitha argues against that, 
Well, everyone else thinks she's basically crazy. Yeah, so basically the, the city's up ahead. If they turn around, they're just, it, she's like, it's dark. We need help. We can't just keep driving in circles. Mm. Now, here's another interesting thing. She has a talisman. Mm. She has a talisman in Victor's lunchbox. Is it? Oh, yeah, right. He gave her a talisman. So maybe just hang the talisman up? Except that you would have to get people to stay in the ambulance. Sure, like which... if they stop and get out. Like, at a random spot. Yeah. That's not going to help you. Right. But I, I feel like we forgot there's, there is a talisman here. Mm -hmm. Even later, like, when we're trapped in the ambulance, you got a talisman, close the door, and right. hang the talisman up. Right. You could have done that. Yeah. Uh, so, Jim and Randall, not Jim and Randall, it's Boyd and Randall on the bus. Boyd asks him why he's even there. As he said, they could switch. Uh, he's kind of, Randall is kind of annoying Boyd. Uh, Randall is guarded, but eventually says that if there's a chance to get out, even with a stupid ill-advised plan, he wants to help. Uh, Boyd sarcastically says, so now you're a team player. And it's because of the things he's seen. And uh, Boyd is like, what things have you seen? He's being pretty dismissive here. Yeah, like, did you forget? Like, he went through some stuff a few days ago. Right. Uh, because, and this is because of what he experienced last season. Everyone's afraid of dying, he says, but he doesn't think that's the worst thing that could happen here. Uh, and he quietly concludes he wants to help. Uh, nighttime at the cabin. Christy can't sleep because of the pain. Kenny is writing something. He says it's uh, for his mom as part of Chinese yeah, he's culture. He's writing a letter yep. to Mrs. Liu. And uh, so, yeah, Kenny and Christy are, are, are talking. Jade's trying to sleep. Right. So it's interesting. We put these three in a cabin and the other three must be in the other cabin. Yeah, because, we don't, we don't you know, see Dale here. We don't see Dale or the other two Colony House residents. We're right. not giving them lines in this episode. Nope. So they're presumably safe and sound sleeping in the next cabin because we, yep. we brought two talismans. So. Right. <laughs> I mean, I would have rather stayed all together and kept both talismans in the same place just to be sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny says it now seems like he thought that everything he was fighting for is gone. Uh, the two people he could talk to about that, about, you know, surviving and all that jazz were uh, Christy and his mother. Christy says that she can, he can still talk to her. Uh, but, of course, things are different now because, you know, she's with Marielle. Uh, Jade wakes up and says, hey, maybe we can talk in the morning. Kenny apologizes, but... Uh, Kenny, Jay just says, like, you know, screw it, I'm, I'm awake. Yeah, he gave up on sleeping, and he goes back to drinking. Yep, and Christy motions for some, and Jade asks if they would like to hear something crazy. Yeah, so he's about to tell them a story, which we're Ooh. not going to get to see that, but we'll get to see the aftermath of the story. Uh, Victor and Sarah finish with their fort blanket, and this looks cool. I kind of want to join. Yeah, they made a pretty impressive uh, fort. Yeah, I know. It was, like, yeah. structurally sound and everything. I know, right? <laughs> And, and tells his story of coming out as a kid and finding the dead bodies. All right, so previously, when uh, hearing about this this whole thing where everybody was massacred, mm -hmm. I was under the impression that Christopher had killed them all. Well, we never really know exactly what happened that night. We don't know what happened to Christopher. Yes, except for the fact that the bodies look very much like the monster's handiwork. I mean, we've seen the bodies before plenty of times. I mean, I guess I didn't take notice of that, but I was on the... It's literally in the introduction for the show. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but I was on the impression that Christopher had something to do with uh, the deaths. I'm I, not as convinced of that. I think I stand where maybe Christopher gave them up somehow. Okay. Like, maybe he was helping... Helping the monsters. Helping them find people. Mm-hmm. Giving up their hiding spots or something, right? Like we don't know exactly what happened that night. And that Victor doesn't know either. That's what he's trying to right. remember: is is how why did this happen? Um, because obviously it was very different than every other night. Every other night, everybody right. hides. A couple people might die, but this night, every single person died. Mm -hmm. What happened? So this is the night he met the boy in white, uh, and he couldn't bury all the bodies. And Sarah seems surprised that he knows the boy in white. Right. She's seen him. Yes. G again, people are finally talking. Yeah, and I know, The audience right? is going to be happy about this. Yes. Um, uh, the boy in white told him to gather the things that were precious precious to all of them and to bury them instead. To bury them instead. So, so that's what the suitcase is. A suitcase full of belongings of all the dead people from the massacre. And I have a really big question because of this. Okay. If he didn't bury all those bodies, what happened to them? They disintegrated? The streets were lined with corpses. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, they would have rotted, but there'd still be skeletons everywhere. Yeah. 
Somebody did something with these bodies. Yeah, maybe the uh, monsters. Like, like what do you mean you couldn't bury them? I was always under the inception he buried them. Maybe there's like a field of bodies piled up somewhere. Like, that That seemed like an interest, a very big point to me that he's like, I couldn't bury them. Mm. So what'd you do? What, right. what happened? Right. Well, I mean, he had 40 years to clean up the mess. So. <laughs> It, it was like 40 years of him being alone, Well, correct? we don't know how long he was alone. Right. He said years. I'm assuming mm. it wasn't all of that time, though. Right. I'm assuming Don is not the very next person to come. Right. There were people at some point. Um, but that's another point. Is we, don't, we don't know how mm. long he was alone with the boy in white. Mm. Some amount of time, sure, but I don't think it was like literally that long. Like eventually people came again. Right. So Sarah asked him why he needs her. And he says he doesn't want to do it alone. And he's gonna remember if he's gonna remember something scary, he should do it with the scariest person in the place. Yeah, but, that was my question. Like, why are you telling Sarah this? Right. And that's it, is because he's like, Well, you're scary, so you won't be scared. Yeah, and it's interesting because he's not scared of her. He doesn't seem scared of her at all. Right. Uh Boyd and Randall on the bus, the monsters are nowhere in sight. He points out that they are creatures of habit and describes their routines. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. Do we know Randall's background, where he came from? We don't. We've assumed that he has a military background. Right, yeah. Uh, and this seems to be more evidence pointing to that, that he, he's basically done some recon and like can describe in detail. And, you know, Boyd's surprised by this, yeah. but it makes sense. Right. He's sitting on a bus mm -hmm. every single night. He's got nothing but windows. Right. Of course he knows what they do. And uh, his point is that nothing is happening right now. The monsters are not here. Right. So and he's we're... freaked out by that. Right. Um, and he tells us that every night the nurse comes out first. She taps on his window for 10 minutes. Now, we've seen this before. Yes. He's telling us this is what happens every single night. She taps on the window for 10 minutes trying to get him to open the door before she gives up. And we've seen her before looking at her clock. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, she's probably doing it literally every night for the same exact 10 minutes. So the fact that they aren't here seems to indicate... They're, he, they're doing something. Right. And also that the monsters know the ambulance is coming. Sure. Yeah. So they, they, knew... they are in the know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, he says another one sits on the swing. There's a couple that sit by the pool. Um, yeah. He knows exactly where they all are at all times. So Acosta and Tabitha argue in the ambulance. Uh, they get to the town. Tabitha insists they stop, but they continue to not listen to her. Yeah, they, I mean, why would they? Right. Where it's like the middle of the night, and we're driving through this little podunk town. <laughs> They're trying to get to a hospital. Right. So, yeah, they don't stop. Um, they pass by the bus. Yep, yeah, Randall and Boyd see it, uh, and they aren't the only ones to notice. Ethan and Matthews notice it. And, and remember, he was told that his mom's right. on an ambulance. So Ethan runs outside. Can't really blame him for this, even though it is stupid. Uh, Boyd, outside the bus, sees this, and with the help of Jim, or Randall, and Jim and Randall, drag him back inside. Yeah, so we ended up with uh, Boyd and Randall outside from the bus. Mm. Or, I'm sorry, yeah. Boyd and Randall are outside from the bus. Ethan and Jim are outside from the house. Mm. And then we all end up back inside the house. Right. Um... We keep having situations where everybody ends up outside at night. Right. Like two nights in a row now, we're all outside. Mm-hmm. Stop going outside. <laughs> right. Uh, the ambulance stops for a person lying in the road. Tabitha tries to warn them, but of course they won't listen. She ends up getting handcuffed to the ambulance for her trouble by Acosta. And she, she... that seems unrealistic, too. I think in in reality, like... She would have been uh, sedated by now. Right. If she was acting like this. So she begs them not to go out, but they, of course, won't listen. And I got to point out, every other, literally every other word Tabitha says during this scene is the F word. <laughs> every other word. Right. Um, And then we get a lot more of those later, like from other characters, like Donna gives us a ton of them. Mm. And I know some parts of our audience have a problem with language. That's going to be the topic. Yeah. When this episode airs and people see this, I guarantee you that's going to be a huge topic is why are we swearing so much? Literally every other word is the F word. I kind of want to go back and watch the episode again and do a count <laughs> on how many F words we have in this episode because I'm positive it's a record All right. for the series. Well, let's do it and then uh, prepare for the next time we do a <laughs> podcast in the series. So, yeah, they roll the body over. Uh, the monster and wakes up. And of course, up. it's not a body. Of course uh, not. It's, it's a monster we all recognize. She's right. the one wearing like that very mod 
uh, gray dress. And uh, Caleb and the driver die. Uh, brutally, as usual. Yeah, so much for my uh, hope that he's going to have a bigger role than Phoebe Rex did. Yeah, she, he ends up having one less episode than uh, Phoebe Rex. Yeah. But uh, we get to see them both again in uh, Monsters vs. Aliens, yes. Yes. Uh, which we're covering at the end of the month. Right. So check that out. Yep. Uh, and Acosta tries to end up shooting at them, but of course this does not work. We know it's not going to work. Uh, and the Matthews and Randall hear the shooting. So she runs off. Yes. Take that. She's a cop. Yes. You have this, what looks like a person, just killed your the two guys. And you're going to leave Tabitha. You chain. have Tabitha that you handcuffed to a pipe in the ambulance. And you have another patient in there who's like basically unconscious at this point. Right. And as a cop, what does she do? She runs She for runs her away. Yeah. Yes. So, what are you doing, lady? So that does not speak well, very well for her. That's for darn um, sure. Wouldn't it have like made more sense to like I don't know, go back in the ambulance, close the door, mm -hmm. free Tabitha, right. maybe ask her because she seemed to know what the heck's going on here. Right. Maybe talk to her about this, and then I don't know, maybe drive away. <laughs> <laughs> nope. She just leaves uh, Henry and Tabitha to, to die, basically. Yeah. Even though that's not what's going to happen. But still, it does not speak very well of her character. Uh, so Tabitha then goes and she wakes up Henry. Yep. And gets him conscious, so that's good. Jim, uh, Jim in the house, in the Matthews house, wants to go help his wife. All right, I've given Jim plenty of shit, specifically this season, for his actions and how he acts. I really can't blame him for this. He knows, he, according to Ethan, his wife is on that ambulance. Right. But still, couldn't some adult stay behind with the kids? Yeah, that's the thing is we're leaving the kids alone yeah. again. Right. And telling them, well, don't leave the house again. <laughs> right. Yeah, Boyd tells the kids to stay behind, saying, hey, look, if I have to worry about you, uh, it's going to be an even worse situation. And remember, it's can. only been one night. Right. Since we already tried this. Yes. So, yeah, somebody probably should have stayed. But, I mean, it's... there's. I don't know. So Boyd and Randall follow Jim. They all go outside, and, and Julie and Ethan. Randall goes with him, by the way. Yeah, they, they all go. So, uh, uh, yeah. So <laughs> we're all outside. You know, how do you know this wasn't entirely a trap? Right. What yeah. makes you really think she's there? Right. Because the voice on the to phone told you to? <laughs> right. Uh, so Tabitha starts talking to Henry about how it's really not bad to be here. It's really not good to be here. Uh, that at any moment we could get killed by these creatures. And, of course, he's willing to listen to her. Right. He believes where they're at. He right. knows, like, he can trust her. So he, <laughs> he, he, he he's on board. So the door opens. Uh, Henry and Tabitha both freak, but it turns out to be Jim, which is a, a nice little comic, uh, comedic beat there, I thought. Uh, Boyd gets the ambulance and is shocked to see Tabitha. They can't get her out. Uh, and Jim asks... Boyd for his handcuff keys, but he doesn't have them. And I was really confused by this. My note is, do all handcuffs use the same key? Yeah. I was and uh, I was like, that doesn't sound right. So I looked it up. And apparently, yes, most handcuffs do use the same key. Interesting. It's uh, to make prisoner transport easier. Okay. And to me, that doesn't make much sense at all. <laughs> that seems really dangerous and stupid. Yeah. Because all you got to do is acquire a handcuff key, and now you can get out of any handcuffs that anybody has. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you should talk to somebody in reality and uh, set them straight. Uh, but he doesn't know where his keys are um, because, I mean, the last time he saw his keys was when uh, Jade free Jade probably has it. Mm. He freed him from the barn with so, the key. Uh, so Randall goes to get toolbox yeah, from the he bus. He, yeah. He, okay. So let's talk about Randall for a second here. He was on the safety of the bus. Yeah. He, he heard the commotion, so he left with Boyd off the bus. To save uh, the kid. Ended up in the Matthews house. Yeah. Then he could have stayed with the kids. He could have. He could have stayed in the safety of that house. But no, he left with Jim and Boyd to go to the ambulance. Right. And now he's going to run all the way back to the bus by himself. Yeah. To get, uh, you know, the tools. Right. So, so far he's risked his life multiple times within the span of minutes. Yeah. And this is a guy that, uh, you know, has gotten a lot of crap. Because, you know, he's not necessarily the most likable guy in the world. Right. But when push comes to shove, he goes into action and he he doesn't think about his life. He's yeah. going to help. I mean, remember, he was helping yeah. dig yeah. out the basement of yes, the collapsing exactly. house. Exactly. Yeah. He's not 
a bad guy. He doesn't mm. want anybody to die. Right. He just is selfish when he can be. Right. And he's a bit of a dick, which, yeah. you know. But, yeah, in life and death situations, he wants to help people. Mm. So, uh, Colony House, meanwhile, has spotted Acosta. They're doing the bell. Uh, right around the hill. And yep. we have a new uh, person. Yeah, because Matthias is dead, thanks to uh, Reggie. Yeah, so this is Colony House resident number four. Okay. Who's ringing the bell. Well, at least he doesn't have a name, so he's safe Doesn't have a, a name yet, so he's <laughs> safe. This is his very first uh, credited appearance. The actor is Colin... <laughs> Let... Ooh. Colin Lachaniak. Okay. H-L-U. I don't know if the H is silent or the L is silent. All right. But that, that name... Um, he was on an episode of Chapel Wait, two episodes of Haven. My goodness. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Nikki is watching out the window and then ends up taking a bullet in the gut. Yeah, so Acosta's running towards the house. All right. She's shooting every creature she sees. And blindly, apparently. I'm going to point out, they look like people. Right. You don't know every one of them is a killer. All right. I mean, they are, but she doesn't know that. All right, so... Uh, taking a break here, yes, uh, Nikki taking one in the, uh, stomach is bad, not a good situation, but that bullet went through the window. Yes. So, at this point, Colony House should be compromised. Right, they need to be boarding the window quickly. None of them are safe at this point. The talisman is useless. Right, they, and they don't seem to make action on that. Right, so one thing, they're not concerned about that at all. I mean, I, I get it. They're concerned about Nikki's well-being. She just got shot. I mean, maybe some extra went and, and boarded the window and we just didn't see it. Maybe. Or maybe it's an indication that... That, that you're right and... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so Claire ends up letting Acosta in as uh, Marielle is barking orders at this point. And, you know, she's gotten a lot of action this season. She's she's doing all the medical stuff. This right, because you know Christy's off right. worrying about Kenny. And it's it you know, I think uh, getting her foot broken. Marielle is actually a better character this season so far. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and so so is not, Randall. She's not on drugs anymore. Right. So yeah. she's doing a little better. I mean she's a more interesting character. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh resident number four, by the way, helps carry uh Claire? carry uh Nikki to the couch. Okay. You meant Claire, right? Who? You said Carrie? Cool. What? I don't know. I so, said Colony House resident number four. Yeah. Helped carry Nikki to the couch. Oh, oh, I thought you said, okay, never mind. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and uh, Bach is there, too. She's yeah. she's assisting Mariel. Acosta gets to see her own work, the fact that she just shot somebody. She's confronted by Donna. And uh, I'm already hating the conversations I foresee happening online because of this. Because of a cop shot somebody. Oh, yes. I don't like that we're doing that. You think... That... I don't like that that's going to be the conversation that this episode's about. I don't think that's intentional. I don't think that's like they're making a political comment here. I mean, that's where the conversations are going to go, though. You know right. they are. Yeah. And I don't want to see that, and I don't want to be a part of that. Well... Like, that's not what this is about. This right. is about monsters. Right. And that's what I want to talk about. Right. Uh, okay, so Randall back at the bus starts to see the cicadas, uh, he, and he ends up running back to the ambulance. He's confronted by the monsters. He tries to use a talisman. The The library monster is like basically you know, like, oh, honey. Yeah, he holds it up. Like, that's not how this that's works. That's not how this works, this is, sweetie. This is not like a cross or, you know, we're not vampires, which I, I continuously see, oh, this is about zombies and vampires. No, the hell it isn't. Uh, the, the, the librarian, by the way, uh is Daphne Steven. I think this is her first uh, actual voice credit on the series. But we've seen this monster We've seen before. plenty of times, yeah. 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 Um, and we're going to get to see her pop up in Sullivan's Crossing mm -hmm. this oh, yeah. season. Yeah. According to IMDb, which we can't really rely on. Right. Uh, specifically, uh, for Sullivan's Crossing. For, specifically for Sullivan's Crossing. Something wires got crossed there. But according to IMDb, she's in episode 205 of Sullivan's Crossing. So okay. we'll be keeping an eye out for Daphne and see if we recognize her in, in human form. <laughs> So, Randall um, throws the tools to Boyd like a football. Yeah. Uh, Boyd tells him to get back to the bus, but and Randall starts to do that. But he's overcome by the cicada hallucinations. Yeah, so they're I, not really there. I, I have... I, I've been, I asked this question last week. What are these hallucinations right. he cicadas? keeps seeing them. So They're affecting him physically. He falls to the ground because right. of it. 
So I'm convinced this is more than just simple PTSD. I think these these uh, hallucinations are coming up specifically to by the forces at work right. to, to screw with him to cause him to do this. Right. Um, yeah, it's very... It would be too convenient if it just happened to happen right, right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but nobody else can see them. Right. So they're not physically there. But yes, I feel like it is a manifestation from... Uh, like, from the entities, mm. and not just from himself. Right. Uh, Boyd can't find his keys, and his cousin Monster has it. Uh, she offers it up and says, uh, You can have them and save everyone in exchange for keeping Randall, who's on the ground. And this is a uh, waitress creature right. now, uh, who's played by Terry Smith Frazier. Mm-hmm. Um, and I recognize her names from the groups. She's in the Facebook group. She's active. Oh, okay. So she he hesitates for a beat, but there is no choice here. Are you going to not take the keys to save Randall or try to? Which yeah, you, know, you, you know you can't do that. You can't do that. But also, like... You can't... It's another example of them trying to hard, make Boyd yeah. feel like everything's his fault. They're hard to Like, oh, you made the decision <laughs> yeah. to kill him. But there's there's no decision here. You, yeah, you, you can't you have, not take the keys. Right. You then have, you all die. Right. You have to do this. Now, I mean, one thing they could have done, like, maybe you could have tried running the creatures over... Right, you could have. Like, go back instead of forwards, try and get to him through them somehow. Pres- presuming that would even work. I, I but, don't... I don't know. There's... But you know you know how Roy- Randall's going to see this. Yeah, and you know how Boyd is going to take it as well. And, but you know, it's time... kind of true. Like, he's trying to be helpful in this episode, but nobody's helping him. Right. Uh, so, yeah, they, they he take he angrily takes the keys. Swears at the monsters repeatedly. There's more to our uh, swearing count. Lots and, of swears in this one. And leaving Randall, who's on the ground, angry at being left. And the monsters will, just look at Randall and squeal. All right, at this point in the episode, I'm like, they're not going to kill Randall. There's no way they're going to kill Randall here like this. Uh, you it, know, it, another reason I didn't, I don't think he's going to die is because this scene was was shown to us. Mm-hmm. Like, there were... There was... Uh, posts, like official posts yeah. that had this image of him on the ground with the monster surrounding him. Right. I don't think they'd have spoil a death like that. Right. And I, I, it would be a shame to cash his character out now because he, they're, they're he finally, has some growth. They're finally making him interesting. Mm-hmm. They're finally doing something with his character, which they haven't really done this season. So, um, yeah, I would have been really pissed if this were the end of his character. And it's still quite possible that He's going to wake up in season, uh, the next episode and be like, his last words are, fuck you, and then dies. Right, right. He could still die, but he's not dead, as of where we're seeing. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so... um, Back at Colony House. Yeah, uh, Muriel. Everyone's trying to help her. Yep. She gets the bullet out with pliers. It doesn't look too great. So Fatima's, like, questioning uh, Muriel, like, do you got this? Like, why is she doing that? Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, who else is going to do it? Right, but she's she's specifically asking, "Do you got this?" Like, what is the point of that? Like, you should be saying something like helpful, like you right. do got this, instead of questioning her. I mean, remember, Mariel is just a nurse. Yes, a pediatric nurse. She has zero experience with gunshot wounds. More than anybody else in this house. Sure, this she's, house she's does. our best uh, yeah. bet right now, but yeah. it's not a good situation. Right, she's no. faking it. Right. <laughs> she knows she's faking it. Well, you know, fake it till you make it. It's work for us. It works until, you know, it's life or death. Right. We haven't had to save anybody or try to dig bullets out of anybody. Um, so, Acosta's still trying to tell her story to Donna. Right. And Boyd arrives in the ambulance. Yes. He, he's drive, he drives up the county house. And meanwhile, Jim has managed to successfully free Tabitha using the tools. They, they get Henry up uh, and into the house. They all seem surprised to see Tabitha because she's been missing Everyone for... Everyone thinks she's dead. Like, right. they wrote her off. Right. She, she's been missing for days. Donna seems shell-shocked at this point. She's she's definitely in shock. Boyd sees Nikki and asks what happened. Donna says, in shock, that it's been a long night for everyone, it seems. Yeah, and meanwhile, Acosta goes over and just instantly removes the handcuffs because she realizes how badly she fucked up. And this is the moment where... Uh, Everybody's covering for Acosta. Yeah. Nobody wants to be like, oh, she's the bad person here. She shot Nikki. She handcuffed Tabitha. And nobody's telling on her. They're all just like, oh, it's been a night. Right. Stuff happened. Things happen. So uh, Tabitha tells Acosta that she told her so. And there's another swear here. 
Uh, Jim asks if they can stay, and of course Donna says yes because what? Well, why is Jim he, even asking? He was asking if there was some place that they oh. could go, like to talk. Is okay. what he was asking. So he wasn't specifically he was asking at, for privacy. He wasn't asking. Um, can um, you know, can we stay here the night? <laughs> because no, you must go out into the. <laughs> No, yeah. he, I think he was like, where can we go talk? But mind you, uh, no, we've seen nobody board up the window. Uh, somebody must have. Maybe, but, you know. Anyway, I'll get off that. Uh, Elgin sits... And, uh, Tabitha, so Tabitha goes upstairs with Jim. She kind of very quickly glances at Henry and is like, are you okay? And he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm good. I don't think she should have walked away from him. No? Like, you and him are the only ones who know, like... He, nobody knows who he is, first of all. He's very ill. He was just in a car accident. was, like, literally on a board in the ambulance. Yeah. He's not well. So you should be having Mar- Marielle check You're in this, like, there's tons of people here. Yeah. There's no communication at all. And she's like, here's this dude sitting here. She shouldn't have left him. That was so mean of her to just leave him mm. in this room full of people. And you know what he's doing? He's looking around the room wondering which of these men is his son. <laughs> Who's not even in the room, right. but I don't know. I feel like there should have been more communication. There should have been more like involving Henry in this discussion. Right. Not like, okay, bye. I'm going to go hang out with my husband now. All right. Fair enough. I, 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 it felt bad to me. I didn't like it. So Elgin sits with Tilly. Uh, Tilly is concerned with Fatima. And then Elgin spots spooky Kimona girl and follow her, follows her. Uh, Kimona girl asks for help. And he, she, he's awake, by the way. Yes. He's not dreaming. He even asks Tilly, like, am I awake? And she's like, what? <laughs> she she only disappears uh, when he accidentally bumps into someone. Yeah, he bumps into someone. So he's awake. He's interacting yeah. with other people. Nobody else can see her. He's on, She's only appearing to Elgin. And she specifically asks for help. She says, help me, please. And then she disappears. So two things here. One, Elgin seems to finally be getting something to do. Two, <laughs> two, so we're here to help out the uh, Angui children. Yeah. And now we got this Kimona woman that we have to help. Yeah, but like, I don't what, think she's evil. I don't think she's trying to hurt him. She's asking Well, no, him. no, but I'm asking, what is the story at this point? Because we think the main story <laughs> might be on the Angui kids. I mean, maybe she is somebody, yeah. I just came up with this thought, maybe she is somebody who was trying to save the kids. Oh, okay. Maybe she's a predecessor so, to that line So of you think she's connected? Who, maybe she saw the, she saw the kids, mm. you know, because Miranda said lots of people have tried before her, right? Right. Maybe it was her. Maybe Kimona Woman was somebody who was in from, and she's trying to save the kids, and she got killed or okay. tra- captured or whatever the heck <laughs> happened to her, and now she's trapped with them. Yeah, okay. That's possible. Or something. Yeah, so that, it, that she's connected to the She's Angelique. obviously connected to something. Well, of course, but... <laughs> So uh, hopefully soon. I mean, in that instance, yeah. what does any of this have to do with Civil War freaking soldiers hanging in a tree or the colonial dude drinking out of a skull that right. Jade is seeing? Okay, fair enough. They're all seeing some pretty weird shit. Right. Uh, so Julie and Ethan, Ethan asks, what if they come, don't come back? And asks, uh, and basically Julie's like, don't talk like that. They're coming back. <laughs> back tonight so yeah. it's gonna be a long night for them wondering if their dad's dead <laughs> yeah n- nice way to treat your kids by the way uh, uh ethan ends up asking what happened to you like uh last year last week last week <laughs> last season uh he asks if she's okay she says that she is but he says he doesn't believe her. yeah he's like i'm not a baby anymore you can talk to me julie tells him that she's scared that she saw things that she doesn't understand and barely remembers but she's never been more scared in her entire life. He asks if he can help her, and Julie says she's the big sister. She's supposed to take care of him. But then Ethan says, if they don't come back, it'll just be the two of us. We're going to need to take care of each other. Wow. And there is our our young Ethan being the mature one again. Right. Wow. Just wow. And also, I feel like this is... He's giving something to Julie. Mm. We know she feels all this pressure of being the surrogate parent to him. Yeah. For the last, I don't know, what's it been, two years? Because she Mm. said she was 15 when Thomas died. Yeah. So, like, she feels that. She's mad at her father specifically for putting her in that situation again. Yeah. And now she here she is again. It's just her and Ethan, and she's in charge. Right. Alone in the house. Don't know if everybody's dead or not. 
she's obviously feeling that right now. She's trying to protect him and be the, the guardian here. And he just gave her a gift. He was like, no, we're both here for each other. Right. Like, you don't have to take care of me. We have to take care of each other. Right. And he just, I think, took a big burden off of her by making her realize that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Julia ends up, Julie ends up hugging him. Julia be my daughter, not the character in the show. Uh, Jade tells Christy, okay, so we cut to Jade, the Christy, cabin. and Kenny. Yep. Uh, Jade tells Christy and, and Kenny basically everything that he's experienced, finally opening up. Uh, and Jade expands on his comments from last episode uh, when he was like, he just made that random comment about uh, I was alone and she uh, made me tea. Uh, basically, he was freaking out at the diner. She made him tea and... Oh, yeah, what he said was, I wanted to be alone, and she made me tea. Now, he's, he's expanding on that story here. Uh, she made him the tea and brought him back to the storage room. We saw the scene. Yeah. And he showed him the book uh, that belonged to Christopher and that had the symbols in it. Right, so he's, he hasn't told anybody any of the stuff going yeah. on with him at all. No. And now he's explained everything. He explained all his visions. He's explained mm. the symbol, the book, why he keeps staring at the book. And then Kenny tells him that she really liked him. Jade says that she, pr she probably just tolerated him more than anything. Kenny insists that she did. She frowned the people she liked. The people she didn't, she simply ignored. And I kind of relate to that because if I, if I don't like you, like, I go out of my way to not interact as much sure. as I possibly can. It, it's not like I treat you badly. I just kind of, like, don't interact as much as I right. possibly can. Uh, and, and this is also, like, it's really interesting to think that Jade didn't know... Right. That she liked him. Right. Like, Jade loved her. They were so close, and he didn't know it. Mm -hmm. He didn't know how close they were. Yeah. And that's so sad. It is. But, I mean, he certainly felt that connection anyway, because he never left her body. Right. He felt episode. it, but he thought that he was just... Alone in that? Yeah. That is sad. And, uh, yeah, so Jade tells him to finish the letter and to say hi to, from all of us. And this is a curious bonding scene. In a season that has had mostly people arguing at each other. Yeah. Uh, there's been very little uh, nice interaction this season so far. Uh, Jade, so Jade tells, yeah, okay. We and then there's this loud noise yeah. outside. Which so is, what's happening now? Which is the bangs from episode one that we heard. Yeah, and, and they're there. That, that Whatever that sound is, is very prevalent right now. Yeah. And we still have to get these characters through this night alive. Right. But we're not going to do it in this episode. No. <laughs> uh, Victor talks about the people in the town. He, he's talking to Sarah. He's talking about the things he remembered. Um, we get a flashback. We get to see um, young, uh, young Victor uh, uh, reprising the role by uh, Eli Arsenault. Which is interesting because he is credited in this episode. Yeah. But he doesn't have any lines. No. He doesn't have any lines, but he is credited. But the boy in white, who's also in all these flashbacks, is not credited. Interesting. It's I do I find that very interesting. Well, um, you're talking about Internet Movie Database, correct? Uh, in the episode itself, too. In the episode itself? Yeah. Okay, so the thing well, no, I would... Well, not IMDb, because these, yeah. these haven't, aren't there yet. Right, so he might still right. get credited These are in there. the episode, like in right. the credits. Gotcha. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, he realizes that there was nothing from Christopher. He can't find a single thing about Christopher. He, well, he, so what he did get is he has a watch that belonged to Mr. Gerber, who yeah. smelled like onions because he ate them raw in the woods. And by the way, this story's proof, and I was never questioned this, but I know some people in the family questioned this, thinking that, like, oh, the monsters didn't exist when Victor was a kid. Right. They did. Mm. They hid from the monsters. We've been told that. Like, this is all proof. Like, not this. It was the same. Right. These people were dealing with the same thing that the people today are dealing with. Yeah. The only difference is they didn't have talismans, so they didn't sleep in the houses. They hid. Right. Like, the way that Boyd did, you know, when Boyd came, when everyone was hiding. But they were all hiding. There were monsters. There were creatures. Everything was the same back then. Um, onions grew wild in the woods, so this dude, Mr. Gerber, ate them. Like, it was the same deal. People mm. fighting for survival. Right. The idea that this was a normal town when Victor was a kid? No. Yeah. No, it wasn't. I, I never believed that, and I've, I've only seen that, that theory pop up recently. I, I've seen people say that quite yeah. a bit, and, and some people to the point where they think that's fact, and right. no. Right. Yeah, they were talking about, like, uh, why would uh, Miranda bring uh, Victor here? I saw that post recently, where she said, why would uh, Miranda bring uh, Victor here? And I'm like, she didn't do it intentionally. What right. What are you talking about? <laughs> 
So uh, anyway. So yeah, uh, Mr. Gerber, uh, we've got his watch. And then we've got a cigarette case with earrings in it that belonged to Dolores. And she always cried a lot. So we're getting, you know, little tidbits about these people. These people we could see eventually in a flashback. We could. Or or in an origin story uh, uh, anthology. Yes. Huh? Uh, huh? Yeah, let's do um, it. But yeah, there's nothing for Christopher. And that's what he's really looking for is something for Christopher. He's trying to remember the deal with Christopher. And he gets upset. Yeah, he starts to freak out. Uh, but Sarah calms him down. And saying that, you know, she's the scariest person ever, so you can't be that scary, so calm down. And then he remembers the ventriloquist, Jasper, which we've seen several times. Yeah, so we get another flashback. Yep. Uh, this time we see Christopher, uh, yeah. again, uh, reprising a role. This is Tom Payne playing Christopher. And um, this is a theory that was out there, and this one is confirmed as true now. That Christopher was the ventriloquist. Mm. Like, that connection had been made. People talked about that. We didn't know for sure until this moment. Right. The dummy belonged to Christopher. Yes. And again, that theory was out there that, oh, he made people laugh. He was the, the ventriloquist. And it was just a theory until this moment. Right. Some people thought that's fact. It wasn't fact. Till now, now it's a fact. Um, and then then Victor says something I, I didn't quite catch. Okay, so the, the, the dummy, by the way, his name is Jasper. Yes. Uh, so Christopher came into town with his... Dummy, Jasper. He's a ventriloquist, ventriloquist dummy. And uh, I don't know what he said because I, that's the last note I have on that scene. Oh, really? We, we get back to this. Oh, okay. But. All right. So uh, Boyd in the kitchen with Donna is breaking down about leaving Randall. Uh, Jim and Tabitha end up discussing Henry. Tells her what she learned. She thinks she bailed. And Jim comforts her. Basically, he says that uh, you didn't bail. You got home safely. And this is more people talking. She's telling him everything. Right. She's telling him about the paintings and the house and Miranda's mm -hmm. visions. And, you know, if, if anybody's still questioning, do these people talk to each other? This is the episode where everybody talks to each other. Yes. So uh, Nikki starts to react in pain. She's coughing up blood. Yeah, this is not good. Not good. Muriel... This is where we're kind of reminded. Muriel's not a doctor and... Yeah. She don't know what she's doing. Right. She's doing the best she can. Right. Uh, she starts to try to help her, but she realizes that she's bleeding internally, and then she dies. Yeah, Nikki's done. Uh, Boyd gets angry with Acosta and goes after her, and I'm thinking at this point that she's kind of being a little harsh on uh, Acosta, but then again, I remember the events of the episode, and no, she, he's absolutely not being uh, too hard on her. Uh, but uh, Donna ends up like saying, hey, Boyd, we need... Let's yeah, he pulls talk. Don away. They go upstairs to talk. Yeah. Um, he's ready to defend himself against yeah. her lecture, but instead... She just breaks down. She breaks down in tears. And it, it's like she, Boyd was the only person she trusted to see her like this. Yeah. She didn't pull him away to yell at him. She pulled him away because she can't handle the situation. Right. So uh, Boyd attempts to comfort her. They embrace. She yeah. admits how scared she is. She's like, why are they so mean? <laughs> That's not actually what she says. But that actually reminds me of... Uh, it the miniseries the original one you were uh do you remember, did you see that oh it's been a long time okay so the o annette, o annette o'toole character i forgot what the which what her actual the girl's name do you remember i don't remember okay well she in that series she she's like she's talking to uh oh, i can't even remember any of their names but she's like why is it so mean yeah but anyway uh, interesting you bring up It, though, because Elizabeth Saunders is in the, the newer It. Oh, okay. She's the librarian in the um, the one they made in the The, the newest one. Teens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to check that out again because I don't think I knew her back then. So yeah. I wouldn't have noticed her. But uh, so Victor and Sarah are talking, remembering Jasper and Christopher. And one day, Jasper and Christopher were arguing. And we see this in flashback. Um where Victor's watching this, <clears throat> and Christopher and Jasper literally are having a conversation. It's pretty nuts. The dummy is uh, <laughs> possessed or sentient or something mm -hmm. uh, where he is alive and, and talking. Kind of reminds me of the Muppets. It kind of reminds me of uh, Goosebumps. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Isn't oh, that yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. with the, yeah, the, yeah. the dummy and Goosebumps? Yeah, I remember something simple, yeah. vaguely like that, yeah. So, uh, and then we hear like the same scream when Jade first saw the dummy and it screamed. Yep. We hear that exact same scream in, in this flashback. And then this is, I think, where uh, Victor says something that. Okay, yeah. He says, Jasper is the one who can tell us why it happened. So 
his plan is to find the ventriloquist dummy. And he what? said Jasper knows why the massacre happened. Oh, uh, okay. So I guess. <laughs> I mean, we know where that is. It's in, it, Victor it's, knows where it is, too. He saw it when right. he was down in the tunnels. Right. So all you have to do is go back there and get Jasper. Go to and the then, scary tunnels to find the dummy. And then interrogate it. Tell you about the massacre. And you're going to put it under. Obviously. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you're going to put it under, like, blinding lights and say, where are the drugs? But anyway, uh, okay, so this is about as sane as, you know, Boyd's plan to try to capture a monster, but okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. But we know it's there. Okay. Victor knows it's there. Um, Jade saw it down there. Yeah, yeah. So it, it exists. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Jade was also seeing hallucinations of it. It means something. It, right. So... Uh, okay, I don't know where we're going with so, this, but... Was it a magical dummy always? Uh, or did it gain life in from? I mean, I'm guessing that's the case. Has it been possessed by an entity? Like, is this, like, right. the same thing that, like, you know, is this Father Cotri entity or something like that? Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we're going with that, but I'm, I'm guessing I'm interested in it's seeing that. It's not what I was expecting or wanting from uh, Victor Sarah story time. Okay, what did you want? I don't know, but this wasn't it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, Nikki has brought up Sarah's with Ellis and Fatima. Uh, Fat- and, uh, re- Colony House resident number four, health yes. carrier. Yep. He, he he had a role in this part. This this, this yep. guy got lots of scenes. So, Fatima wants to sit with her alone because she was mean to her the other day. Well, really, it was the other way around, but whatever. Yeah, they were both pretty mean, but she feels guilty about the fight that they had. And this is where, under my notes, I have... Do I have to watch this scene again? No. <laughs> so she she begins to take the blanket off and starts playing with her wound and then licking her blood. And my literal note is, what? WTF? Like, seriously. Uh, is... Yeah, she sticks her finger in the bullet wound and, and licks it. And then she puts two fingers in and she starts digging in really deep. And yeah. blood's gushing. And I feel like she's trying to get, like, more to the gut, so, good stuff. In one of the uh, reactions to episode two, uh, I saw people were saying, "Oh, it's no big deal. What's going on with Batman? Right? Yeah, the vegetables, vegetables. That's okay. You know, you're you're always a little <laughs> off when you're pregnant. Okay, defend this. Uh, Tell right. me you're not concerned now about right. this. Right. Uh, and she was going to town on like right, yeah, licking the blood and, and guts. Yeah. And I'm fairly confident, like by the time we get back. To this scene, she's gonna like be in the middle of her body chewing. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't, <laughs> I'm scared to see what happens next in yeah. this in this bedroom, and I don't want to know. Okay, uh, so yeah, I don't know where this is going, but this is not a good sit. It's sign going for the somewhere. I think scene. I think it's too late for Fatima. You think? I she's... don't think there's any coming back from this. Well, maybe she gives birth to the monster baby, and then she's better. Yeah, all better. Oh no, you think she's a goner? Okay. So, uh, Boyd and Donna toast to better days, but then they notice... To better effing days. Yes. Got to keep some of those in there. But then they notice the ambulance lights... Ambulance lights... Flashing flashing. lights. They look outside, and there's Randall. You know... On the hood of the ambulance. He's not dead. He's not dead. Uh, he's not carved into a His face is ripped open. Yeah, he doesn't look good. He's gasping for breath. But he's not dead. He's not dead. And he's going to be angry with Boyd. Yeah. So there's two things. One, there's the uh, there's this uh, continuing theme of the town basically screwing with Boyd, uh, basically making him feel more guilt. Yeah, which he doesn't need more of. Right. But um, and then there's also creating friction with uh, Randall. Yeah. You can you can imagine that's a damaging, not a good person to have yeah, a vendetta a beef, against a beef you. With? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's gonna have a serious vendetta against Boyd if he pulls through this, and yeah. uh, this might be the tipping point to turn Randall into the villain that he's capable of being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, R.I.P. Nikki. Yes, we got four episodes with her, and she's done. Her, her, and oh. I was worried about her the minute. She first came on our screen and she was given a name. When she was giving Fatima attitude and being mean to her, I was, uh, you know, kind of rooting for her death. But then after that... She like, apologized in episode yeah. two. So after that, I, I didn't want that anymore, but I kind of knew it was coming anyway. You don't want a name if you're a Colony House resident. <laughs> right, yeah. Give yeah. me Colony House resident number 12. I'm good with that. But, yeah. That, I'll take that name. 
<laughs> so the, All right, this, this was an insane episode. A um, lot of stuff happened in this episode. So Elgin seeing Kimono Woman, even though he's awake. Yeah. That's yeah. that's advancement. Uh-huh. So there's a story. Wonder what's happening there. And he's awake for a change. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jasper. Jasper's gonna tell them what happened. Is he? Okay. So we're gonna have a scene where there's a little old doll talking to I, us? I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Is only Victor gonna see him talking? Maybe. Um Acosta. She she's not gonna get a warm welcome. No. I think people are pretty upset with her. You I would think imagine she's gonna so. have a tough time adjusting to from where's she even gonna live? Maybe she has to live with Sarah because I don't think anyone else is going to let her in. <laughs> uh, and poor Henry, just sitting alone in this house full of people, wondering where his son is. Yeah. Injured. I wonder how long it's going to take for a reunion between the I'm, two characters. I, I can't wait. And I yeah. really want to see how does Victor react. I'm, I'm does imagining... he recognize that as his dad? Does he even remember his dad? If he remembers him at all, uh, either way, I don't think it's going to be a good reaction. Like... What? Yeah. How is this going to go? Right. Um. So that should be interesting. I'm now, not sure. Tabitha told uh, her husband that that's, yes, that that's Victor's dad. Nobody else knows yet. I'm assuming she's eventually, she's going to tell people who are, if, if, if Henry doesn't do it himself. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we got, we got a lot of interesting story possibilities there's, here. There's a lot happening. Yeah, lot, yeah. Lots and lots and lots of plot right now. So watch this episode and tell me that it's boring. Right? Tell me that you didn't get any answers. Well, I mean, I, what, I'm not sure what answers you would have gotten out of this situation, but... Um, as far as our main cast, yeah. every single one of them appeared in this episode. Mm-hmm. Every other episode before this one, there was one or two people that didn't make an appearance. Right. Every one of our main cast is in this episode. They all had something to do. They all have a lot of things happening. Do you do you think they're going to keep this up, this level of quality for the remainder of the season? There because, has damn. to be a a filler episode somewhere, right? right. Yeah, yeah. A chess moving chess. Like pieces. what's our... so in season one we had episode seven was the episode. Yes. In season two they told us right off the bat episode six is the episode. This what's our episode this season? It's like <laughs> every episode feels yeah, like basically. the episode, right? Yeah, well, they're 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 not screwing around this season, that's for sure. Oh, we had one other actor in this episode, Colony House Guard. So this was the person with the gun at the door that Clara pushed out of the way to let Acosta in. He's played by John Mueller. Um, he's he's been in the in the series plenty, but only as background. This is his first credit. Okay. Um, because this is the first time he's spoken. Um. But he's in the Facebook groups. I've seen him oh, posting. Okay. He's posted his pictures. He's the one he's got a long beard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember back when we met um, Martin, mm-hmm. people were comparing him to Martin. Like, and uh, he was just like, hey, he's an extra. But like, hey, that looks a little bit like Martin. I keep seeing posts. So like... many of them. But this is, I think, was the first one right, that yeah. people were comparing to because he's got a long beard. And... Uh, I'm I'm happy that he finally got a credited role mm. because again he's somebody who's in the groups all the time posting and talking, and uh, that's John Mueller, Colony House Guard hasn't been given a name yet, so I think he's safe at least for a little for while. For now, for now. Um, don't don't take a name. Yeah. If they want to give you one, decline it. <laughs> um, his only other credit is in a project called The Trip, which is in post production. So I'm not sure if that's a movie or a series or what that is. Hmm. Um. But yeah, John Mueller. All right. So do we have anything else to say about this episode? It was crazy. Yeah, it, it was an insane episode. It was for crazy. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I hope it'll finally be morning by the time we hit the next episode. It's been a long night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and these people out in the cabin are like, they've been there for two episodes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they need to come home. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see where they take Acosta's character from here. Uh, I, I think the fandom is going to react negatively to her yeah. from this episode. I, I don't think she's going to be popular anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So, Although yeah. I feel like, you know, she's somebody who could probably earn back. It could be a situation like with Randall where... I don't think Acosta's a bad person. I just think no. she's kind of a shitty cop <laughs> and made some really uh, stupid choices in yeah. this night. But she can, made also, bad can choices. you blame her? Because no, people I mean, are going to make bad choices when they're faced with like literal I can't say that. Shit shows. I can't say that I would do any better, but I was not trained to be a cop. So. Right, right. 
she should have been held at a higher standard mm-hmm. than the average person. And are they going to take her gun away? That, <laughs> that's a good question because that's the town rule, isn't it? Yeah. Even though I it, mean, it was for Randall. Yeah. So yeah, you would assume that uh, Ram, uh, Boyd would try to do that. I have a feeling. Yeah. Wow. That could be an issue. <laughs> If she's going to willingly give it up or not. Right? Yeah. I mean, she holstered it pretty quickly when she realized the situation, that she's in a room full of people and not monsters. Mm. But also, like, I feel like she was really quick to just start shooting every freaking monster she saw, too. (laughs) Right. Because we know those are the bad guys, but do you really know those are the bad guys? Right. That person walking towards you? Like, the one who killed, yes. And the second one who was clearly coming to attack you, yes. So once you started running and there's just random people walking in the (laughs) fields and you're shooting at every one of them. Right. Do you know for a fact those are bad guys? Right. Those are monsters. Right. Yeah, she's in a situation that she does not understand. Right. This is how she reacted to it. It's It's not not good. good. It's not good. Um. They have a new ambulance now. Well, yeah, That's there's that. That's good. Yeah, they, there's probably some supplies on there Some at least. supplies, because they were running pretty low on medical supplies, mm-hmm. too. We know that. Yeah. So they have a new ambulance. A running ambulance. They didn't uh, spike the tires out. Right. So that's good. That could be helpful. It could be. A new vehicle with some gas in it. Yeah. And uh, most of the people lived through this adventure. <laughs> Yeah. It's uh, funny that the one who died is somebody who was safe in Colony House. Right. None of the people in the ambulance or going outside to deal with the ambulance died, at least not yet. Right. Because Randall's still alive. The only person who died in this episode was somebody who looked out the freaking window. Don't do that. Don't be nosy. (laughs) I wouldn't be nosy. (laughs) Not me. I I have uh, strong, cowardly survival skills, so I would do okay. I would just uh, stay in the house and not do anything. And I don't care what's going on outside. Not at all. Okay. That's your problem. Not mine. I'm just going to stay safe and sound right here. But that's why I'm, I wouldn't make for a very good uh, hero in a television show. So, do we think episode five is going to be a quieter one? It has to be, right? I mean, sure. It has to be after this. Yes. Yeah. We need a minute to regroup, I think. Yeah. Hopefully, we get our, our Victor and Henry scene in episode five. Yes. I, I feel like we have to mm-hmm. because it's going to be the next day, right? Yeah. Presumably. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not sure what Victor's going to do at this point. Is he just going to go straight to the caves and try to find Jasper? I or... hope not. <laughs> at least, like, find somebody capable to help you. Right. Like, uh, Jade's been down there before. Now, um, Jade and um, Sarah is an interesting pairing. Because uh, we, we hadn't seen them together Jade before. Jade and Sarah? Not Jade and Sarah. And so we still haven't seen them together. <laughs> Victor Victor and Sarah are an interesting pairing. Victor and Sarah are an interesting pairing. And that's why I was really like intrigued that he chose her to be the person he's telling his story to. Mm-hmm. And how she's handling it. She's kind of like, why are you coming to me? Like, that's great, but what? <laughs> like, she has written herself out. Mm. You know, she's ostracized herself from the group. Mm. She She's done mm. like she's just kind of there she doesn't i don't feel like she feels redeemable but maybe she is now maybe maybe victor's gonna give her some levity mm. maybe she's gonna be the one to go help him with his quest you know the show does that from time to time where it just puts people together that haven't been together and you're yeah. like wow i why haven't we seen this right yeah it's interesting yeah and uh yeah, the Matthews siblings seem to be in a better place with each other. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be interesting going forward. They're going to get to see their mom. They think she's yeah. dead. Yeah, that should be interesting. We're going to have that reunion, too. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's next episode. Everybody reunion. Everybody, we have a big reunion. Let's have a picnic. You know? Right, yeah. Barbecue. We've got food. They're going to yeah. bring back food. We're going to have a good day. Yeah. Nobody's going to die, and we're going to all be reunited and... And eat, have a picnic, and that's the episode. You know, there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, comedy this season. Uh, but then we got to deal with Fatima. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> is she going to be able to, like, cover up what happened and nobody knows? I... Or are they going to walk in on her covered in Nikki's <laughs> insides? <laughs> well, <laughs> we presume it goes any further than this. Uh, but, yeah, I uh, I can't imagine that this could get too much worse for her. There's nothing that they can do that would make me even more worried for her at this point. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, do we have anything else to say before? I mean, the only thing that could happen next is she literally kills somebody. Right. 
And then goes on a murdering spree. Yeah, because she has to eat them. Well, at that point, I would go from being concerned to, you know, there's no more concern at that point. It's just, it's a reality at this point. Oh, Fatima. Yeah. Poor Ellis. Yeah. Poor everybody. Do you notice every time we say a name, you got to put the word poor in front of them? <laughs> right. It was always just poor Kenny, but now almost every character I say, poor this person, poor that person. <laughs> right. Yeah. Poor everybody. They're, they're definitely putting people through the ringer this season. For oh. sure. They were not kidding when they said they would dial it up to 11. And it, oh, it's past 11. Mm. Listen, there's there's so much. Yeah. There's so much. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah. Let us know in the comments what uh, what you thought of this episode, what you thought of this podcast. Uh, if you, what do you think is going to happen to Fatima next? Right. Ooh. If you uh, if you comment something intelligent, uh, constructive, we will shout you out eventually. Uh, we're ahead of you at this point when we're recording this podcast. Yeah, we're but, we're as yeah. you notice, we talked about episode two in the, mm. today, and our recording schedule is going to get a little wonky for the next week or two. <laughs> on top of that, yeah. so we'll see what happens. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'd like to hear from you, Stacy. We reached out. I can reach on Twitter, X, Instagram, and Threads at TVN Coupon Talk. If you like this video and want to support the channel, there are a number of ways to do so. You can follow me on Twitter at Corn Productions. You can join one of my Corn Productions Facebook pages. You can buy something from the Corn Productions store on Zazzle. You can buy me a copy. You can join the Corn Productions membership for ninety nine cents a month. And of course, you can like, share, and comment on this video as well as subscribing to the channel. This is Dave and Stacy from Corn Productions signing off.